150,000 riders from around the globe embarked on the Zwift Academy journey. Now, just 10 contestants remain for the finals. I just feel so lucky that I'm here. I've come all this way from Australia to win this pro contract. I'm not going home without it. To win, they will need to impress the pro team judges. We are really looking to see some aggressive racing. And the professional cyclist superstars from Alpes in Phoenix and Canyon Sram. They're not going to get this opportunity elsewhere and they're not going to get this opportunity again. Come on, come on, what are you waiting for? It's the opportunity of a lifetime to win a pro team contract. Two of you will be leaving the competition tonight. This is the Zwift Academy Finals. Starting tomorrow, it's going to be war. Coming up on the Zwift Academy, the finalists go head to head for the last time. Come on, last push. The pro contracts are on the line. You know, it just comes down to this one two race. I'm just trying to give everything and see what it will bring. It's just going to be hell for leather. And two finalists will go home as professional bike racers. And those two riders are. Welcome back to the Zwift Academy Finals here in Mallorca. Today is the fifth and last day for our riders. By the end of this episode, we will know who our two next professional cyclists are going to be. Blimey. Over the last four days, our finalists have been pushed to their limits with individual fitness tests, head-to-head -head races, and indeed an assessment of their bike handling skills from both the team judges, but also their potential future teammates. They have seen, though, all they need to see, and two cyclists will be leaving here with professional contracts, new bikes, and new kit. we better go and wake them up. There we go, don't we? Good morning, finalists. For the last time, can you believe it? Uh, very well done to all six of you who've managed to make it through to the fifth and final day of the Zwift Academy. This is your last opportunity to influence the judges ahead of their decisions tonight. Because remember, two of you today will go to bed as professional cyclists. You'll be wanting to know what the final challenge is, I'm guessing. Uh, well, it's a head-to-head -head race on Zwift. Total of it is 16 kilometers, the first four of which are pretty flat. But after that, it's the epic KOM. Nine and a half kilometers with a 3.8% average gradient. And there is a bit more climbing to go after that because shortly you'll be onto the radio tower climb, just over a kilometer long at 13.8% average gradient with a maximum of 17. This test is designed not only to see your tactical acumen once again and your physiological performance, but also your resilience to all the hard work you've already done over the previous epic four days. And then lastly, your grit, your determination, and your hunger for success as you battle it out on those brutal final slopes. So I think all that remains for us to say is the best of luck to all of you. Go out there and smash it one last time. So it's been a pretty epic week. It's all come down to today. You guys ready? It's the moment, it's like the fight finale. Yeah, it really feels like it. You know, one more battle in the arena. Yeah, one day to go. So we've got all to play for today and I'm just really excited <laughs> yeah. to get it underway. Yeah, it'll be pretty tight, I think, but I think at the moment I'm more just thinking on this afternoon and um, what I'll need to do in that 30, 40 minute race first. I'm nervous, I'm excited and I'm ready to push harder than I ever have before. It's refreshing knowing that the pro contract's yeah. going to Australia. True, true, That's nice. True. But yeah, obviously you're nervous because you want to be the Australian that takes a home yeah, and stuff like sure. that. It's crazy to think that by the end of today, like two of us are going to have pro contracts and we're going to be done. Some of us will be professional cyclists 
Yeah. No, nah, it's completely gone over my head. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know? Yeah. <laughs> Do you know why? <laughs> the finalists will hit the Majorcan roads for the very last time, taking in some easy miles. The sun is out, but with so much at stake, this really is the calm before the storm. Two of these riders will be leaving the Zwift Academy as professional cyclists. Yeah, so it's the final day of the Zwift Academy, and you know it just comes down to this one Zwift race. The Zwift Academy was Alex's first time leaving his homeland of Australia. But he has not shied away from the challenge, displaying his punchy climbing prowess, making his mark as a front runner by taking the win on the Sakalobra Challenge. You know, my prediction from yesterday, Sam gets a bit overexcited and um, he like kind of goes really hard and he'll make it as hard as he can to try and drop Cooper because he's probably the fastest finisher. I'm going to have to look, look over, see when he's vulnerable. I don't know when we're racing and um, attack him when he's vulnerable. Like, just wait for that moment. It's about being patient. So the gloves are off today. It's like absolutely everything, um, all or nothing. Like, this is it. Getting this fire and he switched from triathlon at the beginning of this year. So um, to get this experience as our first year on the road has just been unreal. Rachel has been at the pointy end of the women's competition all week. Transitioning from triathlon to bike racing recently, she's shown the judges raw talent and you can't ignore her fighting spirit. Like we just leave that at the door, we go in and it's a 40 minute all out race. Everyone wants to win, everyone wants to impress the coaches. Winning this would change my life in a massive way. It would be really nice to get over there and properly taste the European experience. You know, racing the, in the big pelotons, the stress, the, the rain, even the crashes. I just, I want to really experience that. Sam has displayed impressive power numbers all week. He took the win in the hill climb, showing the judges that he can be more versatile than they first thought. He displayed tactical prowess on episode three's Zwift race. He did come unstuck on the high mountain descents, but his numbers don't lie, and he knows how to execute his racing prowess. I do plan on just one massive attack, one big all-out effort that'll see my heart rate reach a new high that it never has before, and then try and stick it out from there. If I do miss out tonight, I think I'll regret it for the rest of my life, knowing that I never, never had that chance. Quite a crazy idea to think about all those workouts I did in my garage at home in the Netherlands. Led me up to here in Mallorca, like look where we are now, it's like amazing. Despite being the youngest of the riders, Maud has taken the week of the finals in her stride and been a standout performer. However, taking on a pro contract at such a young age is a big ask. Is she ready? After living this week, I definitely know that this is what I want. I definitely feel like I've been living a dream the last week. Um, you know, before I'd only ever seen Elise and Neve on TV. Um, I had actually met Cassia before, sort of. I took a selfie with her. After giving up her life in corporate law, Caitlin has gone all in for this pro contract. She shocked coaches with her explosive power in the fitness test and has improved as the week went on. It's been a pretty incredible experience. Yeah, riding with Alps and Phoenix this week has just been an incredible experience. You know, it really motivates you even more to get that pro contract. Cooper burst onto the scene by impressing the judges, taking the rider of the day on day one and two, showcasing his explosive sprinting ability. Racecraft comes naturally to Cooper, and if he makes it to the finish line with the bunch, he will smell blood. I won't be going home until it's over. Like, we're all good mates, but once we get in the ring, once we get in the arena, the gloves are off. I want this contract more than they do. With four Australians in the finals, it's clear to see that that country has a strong pedigree when competing in the Zwift Academy finals, and no one knows that better than last year's winner, Jay Vine. I mean, the Zwift Academy, it's... It's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for those who haven't been able to go through the, the normal means of getting a pro contract on, on our side of the world in Australia and uh, in Kiwiland as well in New Zealand. It's, it's really difficult to get noticed and I think that's why we've seen so many Australians make the finals this year and I, I can only, only 
tell as many people as I can that it's such a great opportunity and there really should be more and more people putting their hands up to, to give this a crack. The moment has come for our finalists to enter the Zwift arena for the very last time. This is their final opportunity to show the pro team coaches once and for all that they are worthy of that life-changing professional contract. Well, this is it. The three male finalists are now in situ on their home trainers and completing their warm-up. And it kind of feels like, like the moment of truth now, doesn't it? Well, I mean, it is, isn't it? This is the final opportunity to influence the judges before they make their final decision. This is it. They've got to leave it all out on the road. No second chances. The last race will see the finalists tackling the epic KOM climb. A 9.5 kilometre drag, an average of 3.9% but which is followed immediately by the toughest challenge, the super steep radio tower climb, which at 1.1 kilometers long acts as the ultimate sting in the tail, with gradients reaching a tortuous 16%. They're off under the Enjoy Your Ride banner. It's go, go, go for the Zwift Academy finale. So we can see Cooper's power numbers there, and he's riding at 7.2 watts per kilo, just to try and stay with Sam in these early stages, who's gone out strongly. Well, it's not every day that you see a race rolling through an undersea tunnel, is it? But these riders won't be taking in the views here. So Christoph, this is gonna influence your final decision, I guess. What are you looking for? Is it a case of the rider that wins ultimately this challenge? Uh, we have to see, we have to wait for the result, I guess. Uh, for sure the stress will be on now. This is really their final, final challenge. So we really want to see how they handle uh, this last 35 minute uh, effort. They need to get rid of Cooper uh, probably before they, they hit that final uh, three minutes really steep. Because if he is still there yeah. and not fatigued, then they maybe have a problem. All right, well, I can't wait to see that particular yep. pit. They're going to be, oh, it's, it's going to be gruelling, isn't it? Yeah, it is. So just over four and a half kilometres in, Sam off the front here. He's still rolling that really low cadence, around 80 RPM, climbing up 6% of a gradient. 30 kilometres per hour, though, so he means business. Alex predicted yeah. that that might happen. But Sam unable to shake Cooper and Alex, as you can see. Fellow finalists, Byron and Mass, watching on. So onto the bridge. They're still all together. Sam still unable to shake them, no matter how much power he lays down here. He just doesn't have that explosive power, though, it seems, nice. to get rid of those fellow finalists. It did go early. As soon as they hit the bottom of that climb, Sam's launched a massive move, but Alex and Cooper have been straight on him. They're not letting him get an inch today. And so they've all backed off a little bit now. Tiny little gap starting to appear. But you can see Alex is still as cool as a cucumber. Cooper is still 100% in the zone. And it's all on poor old Sam to make that difference as early as he possibly can. He needs to use that big engine of his. But maybe he's got a punch at the end, we just haven't seen it yet. Well, it feels like after what we saw in Secalabra yesterday, this kind of mountain race time trial should really have Alex's name written all over it. But does he have enough left in the tank after a gruelling week of challenges? Well, Sam going again here. This time at over 600 watts, look at that. Alex and Cooper just sat on his wheel though, benefiting from the draft, just as they do in road racing. Question has to be, when will Alex or Cooper put in a move now? Getting further up this climb now and into the Alpine village, and if you've ridden on Swift before, this will be one of the most ridden roads, I'm sure. One part of the original Watopia. Well, listen to that breathing from Sam, the diesel engine. He's really pushing on here, starting to hurt a bit. We're seeing Cooper lose the wheel here. Can he fight to hold on? Of course, he's a sprinter. He was dropped yesterday on Sicalobra. We might expect more of that here. 
Well, we finish at the radio tower today and the steepest roads are still to go in front of him. They come at the very end. You have to feel it's going to take an absolutely Herculean effort to close this gap today. So Alex has made his move. Alex goes. Alex has gone. We've been waiting for this. This moment was always going to happen. Alex makes his move. He's gone on the smaller gradients as well, just 2 and 3%. Well, the heart rate's right up there into the 190s as he puts in a hard effort. Nine kilometers of full-on racing already behind him here. I'm not sure Sam has a response, you know. Alex continuing to pull away here. This is really impressive. Alex through the tunnel then, and you can see he's maintaining a higher power output than his rivals. He can also see a lot more than normal in a swift race. He's riding next to Sam and Cooper physically, so he can see their body language like he could on the road, but he can also sneak a little bit of a look at the additional data on their screens. You can't see that when you're out on the road, can you? We know he loves to race bikes. He's proving to be a real racer as well, and his tactics matching his physiology. Is he riding away for the win here? It certainly looks like it. Uh, Matthew, one of these riders is going to be your teammate as of tonight. What have you made of their performance so far in this final race? Yeah, I think um, especially Sam started uh, really strong this week, but now we see um, yeah, that Alex is uh, getting better and better, so it seems to be uh, also doing this really great today, uh, yesterday as well, so he, uh, he was quite strong uh, towards the end of the week, so he's still very young, he has a lot of potential, so it's going to be a difficult decision. Mm. Cooper not out of this yet, though. Still plenty of road to go. Can he catch Sam and show the judges something that could help him land the contract, maybe? He's been the rider of the day twice, remember? Oh, what we got here, it's the Super Took. It's back. It is back. Of course, it's still allowed in Swift. Well, after nine and a half kilometers, 414 meters of climbing, Alex is over the epic KOM there. Well, a moment to rest on the descent here before his trainer reacts to the pitch of the road. It cranks up the hurt, and for the hardest part of today's climb, it's all go. There are ramps, remember, of up to 16%. Yes, 16%. That's really gonna hurt at this point in any race. Cooper, the final rider to get over the summit and battling to make up time. Well, just like a mountain top finish on the roads, Alex has made the decisive move. He's got rid of his rivals. He now just needs to put in one final effort and leave nothing to chance. So you can see the Flamme Rouge behind Sam Hill there. And just going under it, Cooper Sayers. Fourteen percent on the slopes of the radio tower. Only 700 metres to go. Alex is still in control here. Heart rate right up at 196 now. His cadence has slowed, but his power's still strong as he's grinding his way to the summit. You can see it there in the distance. And here he is, the 19-year-old from the Sunshine Coast has put down his marker in this last challenge. Will this be the difference between him and his rivals behind him on the mountain? This is absolutely incredible. Take a look at this. Alex is absolutely flying. The heart rate right up there. The numbers have been world to a standard. The contract is up for grabs and Alex is riding away to glory. One last big effort. 15 and a half K done. Here he is, Alex going to the line. Incredible stuff. And Alex has absolutely killed it. Alex is there, he wins the race. The race goes to Alex, but will it be his pro contract? It's now down to the pro team judges to decide whether he lands the contract or whether any of the other two I've done enough to pivot him to the post. Oh, man, alive. That was some race, wasn't it? I was waiting for Alex to crack 
Yeah. From the point at which he attacked all the way to the finish. It didn't happen, did it? In fact, he extended his gap all the way to the finish line. Matt, the numbers he was putting out, insane. And like we said, oh, super high heart rate. Like, how can you be that fresh well, at the end know. of this week? It's very impressive, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, behind, Sam did hold on to second place. Uh, not the win that he was hoping for, of course, but Cooper, that was a really valiant effort from it him, was, wasn't as it? Well, because yeah. he is not a climber. The other two are. So to finish so close to Sam, that was an incredible effort. Yeah. He didn't throw in the towel, did he? No. And we wanted grit and determination. Definitely showed it. Right. Well, we'll let them finish their cool down, then we'll have a deliberation with the coaches. It's the all important <laughs> announcement. First up, though, the women's race. Yet again, we leave the boardwalk in downtown Watopia and head out along Ocean Boulevard. Out we go into the mountains and not long before the climbing begins. Mild there, taking a look at her competition. Looks like she enjoys this type of Zwift arena racing. A bit different from racing at home, isn't it? Rachel already up to 10 watts per kilo as she puts the hammer down early, going through the undersea tunnels now. You can see the effort already on the riders' faces. Really early competitive start this. Rachel going again, up the tunnel and out in front. Racing, racing. 11 kilometers to go as the riders go over the segment start for the epic KOM climb. Mal just sitting on Rachel's wheel, saving energy. Well, it's been quite interesting watching the start because Rachel put in a bit of a dig in a very similar way to Sam in the men's race. Not sure if it was to test the waters or trying to sap some of the energy and the power in the legs of Caitlin and Mal. But we started the KOM at this point, so they're going uphill. 6% the gradient right now, all still together. Rachel still out in front then, and Mal is just sitting on there, energy saving in the draft. Really smart racing again. She's shown it on the roads of Mallorca this week and her swift racing experience, pretty obvious too. Oh, in the meantime, it's not good news for Caitlin, I'm afraid. Caitlin is dropped. Caitlin is going to have to close the gap on the suspension bridge here. The race could be over if she doesn't, with 10 kilometers still to go. Numbers looking good for the two out in front. Rolling through the Alpine village, it's Mild and Rachel still together. Rachel giving absolutely everything. Does she have enough to drop Mild? Looks as though Mild has decided to make a move, however. Eight kilometers to go. Look at that gap now back to Caitlin. She's only halfway and still plenty of time to get back. She needs to measure her effort, though. Look at Mild. Still nose breathing, very much in control. This is a really impressive show by the young Dutch woman. So we're now just over the halfway point in terms of distance, at least, and joined by Beth. Your impressions of this race so far? I wasn't sure how they were going to take it on. Um, at the start, it was pretty relaxed, but actually quite early, Mild started to put some pressure on, so it was interesting to see her do that. Um, and she's really like watching the reaction to the others. So um, now I'm really liking that Rachel's fighting so hard. They're not going to change what strength they've got now, but they know what they can try to use it against the others. Like mm -hmm. basically they just need to, it's tactics really. Well, the gap from Mild has stretched to 24 seconds. Caitlin though is holding her gap to Rachel. Five k's to go now as Rachel is into the tunnel. The snow line roads of Watopia. Has she got anything left to make a change over the final third of the race? Yeah. This isn't a done deal yet because Lars has just been showing me uh, some data from Maud, which is her core body temperature. And as you might imagine, doing this kind of effort, she's getting pretty warm. But also, he points out the fact that the heart rate is starting to drop. Now, in an effort like that, it's not necessarily a good sign when you combine the two. So it's not over yet, not by a long shot. Mild 
Maldi just sitting at over five watts per kilo. This is another incredible performance. Now, has Maldi overcooked it? It remains to be seen. One thing for sure, the gap is a big one, and she's eating up the road in front of her. Under the epic KOM banner she goes, and Maud picks up a new power-up. Now, what would it be? Will it help on that super steep gradient to come? Maud, in the meantime, on the descent. The Flamme Rouge now, one kilometer to go for Maud. Takes a sip from that bottle, looks around. She's got a minute lead over Rachel. I really can't see Maud throwing this away now. Now, Rachel over the top of the climb as well. I've been keenly watching Mal since you just updated us on her cool belly temperature and her heart rate going down. But she seems to have been able to push through it, doesn't it? And yeah. she's almost like she's telling her body, no, you've got to keep going. It's like willpower. Yeah, I mean, it's quite incredible to watch, isn't it? Like, we've not really seen it go this hard yet no. this week, have we? And she's gone from the very bottom, which when I was asking Lars earlier, he was like, no, I don't think she will. And this is quite a show of defiance. She really wants this contract. So. Well, she does, doesn't she? Because she doesn't need to go quite as hard as she is now because her advantage is a minute and seven seconds. Rachel works, Rachel tries, but she will not catch this teenage sensation from the Netherlands. You could see the aero power up, the blue icon above her head. All important part of the Zwift gameplay. Mild out in front, Mild on her way to victory. The race will be hers. Will the contract? Will Canyon Shan be concerned by her age, maybe? We will see. Last year's winner, Neve Bradbury, only 18 when she won. She signed an extension. Here, though, Maud is going to finish the job. And she wants to give more. Just look at that. She's out the saddle. She's coming to the line. Maud makes it hers. Over the finish line, collapsing in exhaustion. Superb. Absolutely superb. Maud wins. This is Rachel who's going to finish second. Not even a fighting performance from her was good enough to get near Maud on the day. And Caitlin comes across the line as well after being dropped around a halfway up. Maud head and shoulders above the rest. She wins. Rachel second. Caitlin third. There are your women's final race results. Well, that's it. We are done and dusted with the 2021's Swift Academy, except for the important part of announcing the winners. But what a race again. Oh, my word, that was a race. I was really quite emotional at the end there. Like, you know, that was incredible effort from all three women. And the sprints at the end, you know, at the end of that all-out effort, yeah. Mount putting out 450 watts on the way to that one. Like, yeah, despite overheating and heart rate going down gradually. Yeah, yeah. it was quite the effort from all of them at the end. Crowd obviously helps, but <laughs> amazing to see them lift it at the end of all those challenges. Brilliant. Yeah, yeah, it really was something to behold. Right, we need to go and have a debrief with the coaches, then, because whilst the riding might be over, the most important part of the Swift Academy finals is about to happen. After two more thrilling races, the finalists have done everything they can. It's now up to our pro team judges to make their decision on who will be joining their teams. And now it's decision time. We'll start with Cooper. He looked a bit tired. After all the challenges today, not only Cooper, to, uh, to say it honestly, uh, we saw the first signs of fatigue with, uh, with some riders. But on the other hand, we have to say it, um, it was again a climbing challenge. And of course, as sprinter type, it's not that he did uh, bad at all. None of these days have been easy for him. He's a bit more of a sprinter, so in a real stage race, he's uh, a lot more time in the back, uh, staying out of the wind, saving energy. That's what, not what he could do here. Let's move on then to Sam. For me, I still uh, stay a bit with my opinion of the, of the beginning of the week. His abuse of power a bit, with his low cadence gear always, really yeah, destroying the muscles uh, almost. At the end of all the challenges and from day to day, the fatigue really, really comes in. And I think he pays that a bit uh, on day five. And then lastly, today's winner in fine style, it was Alex. From a 19-year-old kid, you want to see it confirmed with all the circumstances. 
and just confirming that from day to day and at the last challenges yesterday and today then performing even better yeah that tells a lot about the the physical capacities too yesterday his Logra time was a really good time we I had some uh, checks on the KOMs of Strava and he had the same time as Simon Yates so that's already something. Okay guys, so we are going to be announcing the winners very soon. How, how tough is the decision going to be? I think it's clear. After final thoughts shared from Alpes in Phoenix, it's over to Canyon SRAM for the last deliberations. Lars, Beth, it's my final interrogation of the week, which I'm sure you're very relieved about. Uh, we'll go in reverse order as we do for the challenges. So today, for the race on Zwift, it was in third place, Caitlin. If you're looking just at age, you may think that she has had more training, uh, more years of training, but actually that's not the case. And so then when you reflect on that, then it can be expected that this like, level of fatigue day after day, uh, that today Caitlin arrived and was feeling yeah, tired, but to, I mean, to her credit, she, she did try and push, and I'm sure at the end she gave, uh, got everything out of herself. Uh, second place on the day was Rachel. Yeah, I think there was some little, not real full attacks, but some touching on, on the competition there at the very beginning. And uh, she was up there for the fight and then just uh, struggled a bit when uh, Maud uh, really launched her attack. Uh, and on to our winner, again, with the perfect score, in fact, with all the challenges over the last five days. Maud with a 1 minute and 37 second advantage by the time she got to the finish line. I mean, she couldn't have done any more this week. She's really calculated with her, with her efforts and with her tactic and how she reacts to things. She you know, is putting in some efforts, but deliberately looking to left and right to see what the other two finalists were doing and how they were coping with what she was uh, giving to them, really. And so, I mean, this is beyond her years of experience, I think, in racing. So very impressive. Well, you've got a few more moments to make your decision about tonight. I'll be quizzing you in about half an hour's time. And just after that, we'll deliver the news to the winner. It's a nervous wait for our finalists, whilst behind closed doors the pro team judges make their final decisions about who will be taking home those pro team contracts. Finalists, 150,000 amateur riders entered the Zwift Academy, and your talent shone through from the best the world had to offer. And now, after five more intense days of competition and training, it's time to announce the two winners, the two recipients of the prize that everyone has come here for, professional racing contracts. So the judges have not only been crunching the numbers, but also assessing how you coped with five intense days, physically and also mentally. And let it be said, the standard of all 10 finalists, not just the six of you remaining here, has been incredibly high this year. It has, but after much deliberation, the coaches have come to their final decisions. Two of you are about to be professional cyclists. And those two riders are... Maud Alderman. And Alex Bogner. Congratulations, well done. guys. <laughs> well done to all of you. <laughs> I just found out I'm going to be a professional bike rider for Albus and Phoenix, and I'm just like, oh, I'm like, like lost for words. I'm absolutely shell shocked, to be honest. Yeah, this is going to be absolutely life changing. Um, I'm going to be in Europe next year, racing my bike for a, a professional team. You know, it's just, oh, it's absolutely incredible. Um, I can describe how I feel right now. It's. Yeah, it's unreal. I didn't see it coming, like I wasn't expecting it or something. It's, no, I don't know what to say. It's like I don't can put words into it. Like, it's unreal. Couldn't be more happy for him, honestly. He's such a hardworking kid and he's, yeah, it's just the, just the beginning of things to come for him. So, so stoked for him. But I think he has a lot of potential. What he showed this week at that age, it's, uh, it's incredible. and. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward as well to see what he can do in, uh, in the races. If we didn't know going into the race today, we definitely knew afterwards. Like, 
I've never seen somebody be able to, to dig that deep. Well, we're really excited to, to have her for next year and uh, we're expecting uh, already a very strong first season. Yeah, I think uh, Alex outperformed over the whole week in general. The first uh, days were still a bit hard to judge because the level of the riders was really close uh, next one to another. But the last two days Alex really made a difference and if you can make it uh, at the end with all the pressure and all the eyes on you. Well, what an incredible week that has been yeah. from start to finish. I mean, for the riders, enjoyable, but very intense. The experience of a lifetime, I'd imagine, yeah. but heartbreaking for eight of them. That's right, yeah. For those eight riders, the dream of winning the Zwift Academy is over, but their dreams of turning professional are not necessarily. No, very true. Although that dream has just come true for Maud and Alex. Wow. Yeah. Uh, it's also been an incredibly enjoyable week for us as well. And for that, we have to thank a few people. We do indeed. Firstly, we've got to say a huge thanks to Zwift. Firstly, for creating the Academy. I think it's fair to say, isn't it, that they are the only branded cycling that are able to do this with their platform. And the fact that they're running it is fantastic for the sport. We've got to thank also the people behind the scenes who created this series. Uh, also the pro riders and staff. They've been brilliant with us all week. Yeah, they have. And incredibly, the finalists as well. They've just been a fantastic bunch of people. They have indeed. Now, if you have a dream of becoming a professional cyclist one day, then make sure you enter the Zwift Academy next year. Otherwise, you might regret it. Thanks for watching. Goodbye. <laughs>